back in 2018 when the world was a far simpler place than it is right now, I made a little video called Weapons Grade Hot Sauce. And as of today, that video is the most popular video on my channel. I still actually have a bottle back here on the shelf. It's been there for the last two years. And that's just testament to how fantastic fermentation is. Look at the color of that. It's still brilliant. And I wouldn't hesitate to use it. It's still looking perfectly healthy. But I thought it was about time for me to make another batch and take the opportunity to actually show you how you yourself can make a super hot hot sauce, kind of like this one. The problem you have when you're making a hot sauce, especially with the super hots, is depending on the variety that you're growing, it can take a long time to get enough of those chilies to actually create a proper fermentation. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can do that using frozen peppers. First things first, let's step back a couple of months back in November when I went and picked a few of my peppers to actually create the starter to make this a success. There we have our beautiful, fresh, super hot chilies. And I've given them a good rinse, ready for us to do the next steps. Now, of course, this is about creating a starter for our fermentation. I've been freezing my super hots for the last couple of months, and we need some fresh ones to be able to start off the fermentation before adding in the frozen ones. So these ones here, what you can see is that I've left a lot of the stalks on. Now, I'm actually going to leave the stalks on a few of them. I'm not going to leave all of them. I'm going to take some of them off. But the stalks, they contain a lot of the lactobacillus, especially on the calyx, this little bit down the bottom here, uh, where it connects to the chili. And you want to keep that on there just so that it has a little bit more of the lactobacillus so that the starter kicks off a bit quicker. There we have it, our beautiful peppers. There's such an aroma going on here, which is making it <coughs> hard to breathe, but um, <laughs> these are some seriously hot peppers. I have cleaned this already. I have sterilized it, and now I'm just gonna sanitize it quickly just before we use it. It's always best practice. You can have a look. I'll link up above to the video that I made about cleaning, sterilizing, and sanitizing, but this is a no rinse acid sanitizer which is food safe at the dilution rate that we have it. So we're just gonna just spray it around, which is gonna help this to be <coughs> more effective. Oh, it's been a while since I've had super hot <coughs> in here. Uh, Dory, I am covering my mouth. <coughs> oh my goodness. Wow, that is strong. Um, <laughs> When I say weapons grade, I'm not kidding. The stuff is hectic. Oh, I'm sure it'll disperse crowds very nicely. <laughs> but let's hope we can make a, a good hot sauce out of it instead. <laughs> when you are making your own fermentations, you don't want a lot of headroom. What happens is a lot of people that send me messages asking why their fermentation is failing or there's some problems with it. A lot of the time they go and take a big jar like this, they put peppers down to the bottom layer and then they fill the rest up with brine. It's going to dilute the lactic acid that's getting created during the fermentation process. And that's because there's just so much brine in there. So the brine is inert. I mean, it's going to, it should be at about pH of seven because it should be normal tap water. And it's just going to dilute the amount of lactic acid that's in there and it defeats the whole point of this. So that's one mistake people make. The other one is <laughs> they go and they'll either do a mash or a brine fermentation, but they'll only use the bottom of the jar. So if they were doing it with brine, they would only fill it up to like there, which means you've got this massive headroom here. And that means there's a lot of oxygen in there that could potentially create some harmful pathogens or at least allow the harmful pathogens that might be in here or bacteria to grow because they use oxygen. You want to get rid of as much oxygen as you can from here by reducing the headroom. Oh, excuse me for sniffing. So I'm just going to push this down as much as I can. Yeah, I could use a fermentation weight, but I'm not going to do that. What I might do is I might go get a cabbage leaf like I normally do and just, just keep that stuff down. So when I pour the brine in, it just keeps it all below the brine. The nice thing with using cabbage is that 
if you've ever made sauerkraut, you'll know that cabbage is a good carrier of lactobacillus. So it'll also help us with the starter. Now all I'm going to do is just wedge this in here. And it should keep the peppers underneath the brine level. So let me just put that in there. There we go. We need to make up our brine. Now I've got one liter of filtered water. You can use tap water if you want, but you don't want too much chlorine in there because it can affect the fermentation. Filtered water is best or bottled water. That'll do the job as well. Now it's one liter. I'm going to be using 2.5% brine mix. So that means I need 25 grams of salt. There we go. And that goes into the water. And now let's mix that up. Just a reminder, the salt you use needs to be not iodized and it needs to also just not have any additives in there, uh, things like anti-caking agents and things like that. 100% salt is best, sea salt if you can get it. Uh, I use Himalayan rock salt and it does the job just fine. So you can see I filled this so that it is covering the cabbage and it's covering the chilies. It has come up to there. I'm not gonna go any higher than that because if the bottom of this touches the liquid, this thing is going to pressurize and it'll actually push the liquid up through this. So you don't want that to touch the liquid. Of course, this is cleaned and sterilized. I am just going to give it a quick spray with my sanitizing solution just to be on the safe side. We don't want to ruin our lovely <coughs> pepper fermentation. So <coughs> I'm not going to put any liquid in here just yet because I need to just make sure that <coughs> as much of the air is out of here. So that should be okay. Let me put a little bit more because it's probably going to let a few more air bubbles out. If you haven't done a fermentation before, what is going to happen is it's going to release lactic acid, which is what we want. That's going to preserve our chilies and also give it a bit of a tang, kind of like pickling it a bit. And it's going to transform the flavors, give it an amazing taste. The other thing it does is it releases CO2. And the CO2 is going to produce air bubbles similar to what we just saw. That's going to happen again when the CO2 starts getting released and you'll see bubbles start forming again. And it could potentially push the stuff up and into the airlock. So just keep an eye on things. I'm just going to pull the, the airlock out a little bit more just so that it's not poking out too far. There we go. Okay, that is ready to go. Let's go and stick that inside the Ferminator and we're going to come back to that in probably a week's time where we're going to start adding in the rest of our frozen super hot chilies. been about two weeks now and it is looking gorgeous we can see that the brine is a little bit cloudy and that is perfectly normal i do get that question quite a bit when people are fermenting the whole point of doing a fermentation is that you want your lactobacillus to reproduce and that's all you're seeing here it's the excess lactobacillus that's in here some of it's dead some of it is still active but that is perfectly normal if you can see a lot of bubbles rising to the top still that's the co2 that gets produced during the fermentation process this here is going to be used as a starter for the rest of the fermentation for things like this so here are some frozen peppers that i've been collecting over the last week or so and i've got plenty more of these uh, these here are my seven pot primos i've got another couple of kilograms of these guys and that's going to be adding a ton of heat we've also got some seven pot habaneros and as well as marugas and these brown ones are maruga choc and again these are all super super hot so this <laughs> is going to be a scorcher we're going to be shaking things up a bit we're going to be changing from a brine fermentation to a mash fermentation and there are some core differences between a mash and a brine fermentation beyond the obvious. The fundamental thing here is to remember the salt measurement. When you're doing a brine fermentation, you're measuring the amount of water that you're using and you're adding in 25 to 3% salt for the weight of the water, not the ingredients that are inside the brine, the, the actual thing that's getting fermented. When you're doing a mash fermentation, you're going to be adding salt as a percentage of the weight of these. You're increasing the surface area of this and the protection for 
things like pathogens and stuff like that that the salt is helping with needs to coat every little aspect of these chilies. When you're doing a brine fermentation, obviously the salt is within the, the water and that brine and salt is able to cover over the peppers and protect them perfectly fine. When it's mashed, obviously it's a whole different story. If I add these into this without adding any salt, we're actually diluting the salt. You want to keep the percentage around about two and a half to three percent. No more than 6%. I know some people like to go a bit higher and they go up to like 4.5%, 5%. That's fine, but you find yourself a little bit limited later on when you're trying to make your sauce because it might turn out a bit too salty. And honestly, you don't need much more than 2.5% as you can see by the healthiness of this fermentation. Now before we blend up our chilies over here, we're going to open this up and see how we did. Also want to give it a bit of a smell. As you can see at the top there, that is looking absolutely perfect. That cabbage is probably quite edible. Um, my hands are clean, but let's take that out. Wow, there's a lot of fragrances going on. So there's the cabbage. Whew, wow, that is some heat. Um, smells gorgeous. That is looking absolutely perfect. I'm so happy with how that turned out. Sometimes, you know, you'll get a little bit of calm yeast in there, something like that, which is actually pretty harmless, but uh, there's nothing like that in there at all. It is just absolutely stunning. So we're going to be adding in this healthy fermentation with our frozen peppers, which another small tip here, make sure you let these defrost for a while. You don't want absolutely frozen peppers in here because it's just going to slow things down. You want this fermentation to kick off again quite rapidly. Before I blend up the rest and add it to our bucket for the rest of the fermentation, I've been too tempted by this piece of cabbage that we had on top. It just looks so tasty. Um, it's not going to be as hot as it possibly could be. I'm sure it is going to have some heat, but um, I'm going to give it a try because uh, I love sauerkraut and this is effectively a sauerkraut because you're using lactobacillus, which is basically what sauerkraut is. It's just lacto-fermented cabbage. So I'm going to give this a try. Might be a bit silly, but I don't think it's going to be terribly hot. Let's see. Tasty. Has got, has got some heat, but I think it's bearable. Damn, that tastes good. So good. <laughs> the heat level is probably around um, bird's eye or Thai chilies, that sort of thing. So not ridiculous, but that's tasty. Anyway, <laughs> enough of me snacking. Let's uh, finish up here and get this... Uh, fermenting again. That is building in heat a little bit, but the cabbage was absolutely delicious. Still bearable, but yeah, it is warm. <laughs> For the rest of the fermentation, we're going to be using this bucket here. It's a food safe bucket, brand new, and I have drilled a hole in the top here, fitted a silicon grommet, very similar to what we've done with the smaller jar, but uh, obviously bigger container. It is important to make sure that it is food safe, food grade, plastic. Don't go and buy any old bucket at the hardware store. Make sure you get the right thing. And all that we're going to do is exactly the same as we did here. We're going to be filling this up, trying to leave as little headroom as possible. And then we're going to continue fermenting this for at least another two weeks. Before we finish blending up, I wanted to point out that we actually have two other ingredients we're going to be adding to this. The first one is cumin seeds. Absolutely love the flavor of cumin seeds. This over here is mustard seeds. Mustard seeds inside a hot sauce is a fantastic combination. These two together are going to make this sauce really pop. So if you can get past the heat when you're trying the sauce, you're going to get these awesome flavors coming through besides obviously the lovely flavors of the peppers themselves. So I'm going to go and grind these up really fine and we're going to be blending that into our mash and that's going to go into the fermentation at this stage.
As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it is really difficult to get a good balance when working with super hot chilies, especially when the end result that you're looking for is a super hot hot sauce. So when I did the original weapons grade hot sauce, I did add back some of the brine, which did dilute the heat a little bit. It's still insanely hot and it's probably too hot for the majority of people but it did dilute the heat a little bit and that was just to make it so that it was pourable, as you can see, quite liquidy. Compared to the sauce we've made today, this one is more of a ketchup sort of consistency, a little bit thinner than ketchup, I'd say, but <laughs> that's there to uh, maintain the heat levels. This is going to be seriously hot. I spent the day yesterday bottling this stuff and I was in pain for most of the evening while I was trying to wash my face. It's just, yeah, it sticks to you. It is seriously hot. I did adjust the ingredients a little bit yesterday. I added some more mustard seeds and some more cumin seeds, ground up, of course. I also added in some peppercorns that are ground up, uh, not for the heat, purely for flavor. Peppercorns actually bring out a nice bit of flavor. However, I don't know how much of that I'm gonna get uh, coming through when you have such a strong hot sauce. Now, this was just the leftover bit when I was finishing up the bottling process. And uh, yeah, I don't wanna open up this bottle. So there's some more for you guys. Let's give this a try. Oh, good smell. Um, overwhelmingly, the smell of these hot peppers. A Little bit of the mustards coming through and the cumin. But uh, let's give that a try. Oh boy. It's quite a lot on there actually. I don't know why I do that to myself. Uh, hot almost instantly and building. There's a bit of sweetness that comes up front. Um, actually, the flavors are pretty good. Um, I was worried that, oh, I was worried that uh, the heat would just overwhelm the extra flavors I've added, but I actually think it's done pretty well. Um, oh, that warms the mouth. Whew. <laughs> I feel it warming up my chest, my face, uh, my throat. A lot of the heat is in the mouth, um, the tongue, the roof of the mouth, um, not burning the throat too badly. Uh, it's warming. I don't know if I expected it to be a little bit hotter or if I'm just getting used to the heat, but it, it's a really strong heat. It's a really strong sauce, uh, but it's nothing like a, you know, Mega Death, Blair's Mega Death, or a Dave's Insanity, it's nothing like that. But those are extract sources. This is hot. For the the heat junkies out there, I think you're gonna enjoy this. Um, yeah, not bad at all. Uh, whew. <clears throat> Sorry, it's still building, it, it hangs around, that, that heat hangs around. Um, it's burning my lips now. It uh, didn't burn the lips at first, but it's definitely burning now. Um, not bad. I'm interested to see what you guys think of it. Like I said, it will be up for sale in the store. Hopefully there are some left by the time you've watched this. I will also be giving away one bottle at my next live stream. So February, the first Sunday of February, I will be giving one of these away. So I'll keep one back. That's hot. Anyway, <laughs> that's it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something, uh, quite a few tips throughout the video that I hope um, help you on your sauce making journey. And until the next video, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and stay spicy. <coughs> My lips are going numb. Whew.